Hello and welcome to my Linux journey. It's me, KB, and my excitement level is 100% because I did something impossible as a new Linux user. To be honest, I don't know where to start. I'm just overwhelmed and I'm also sweating because it's actually too hot outside. It's probably 40 degrees uh, Celsius outside. Now, technically, this is a second episode of my Linux journey. In my last video, I just had some chit chat. That's all. I didn't do any action. But in this video, we're going to do some actions and I'm going to show you guys what I did, how I did it and how I feel about Linux. We're going to talk about the distros. We're going to talk about the desktop environments and some other stuffs <laughs> hopefully the first time when i used linux was back in 2012 or 2013 i'm not too sure in between those years i actually tried linux for the first time and that was ubuntu because i saw some random video about the ubuntu they were saying that ubuntu is really cool i installed it and i tried using it like a windows because i'm a windows user so i expect linux to work like windows so it didn't actually work like windows so I went back to Windows 7 at that time. For all these years, yes, I have been actually using Windows as my main operating system, but here and there I have been actually testing and playing around with the Linux. Mostly whenever there is new distro that I actually think is cool or I just need to test. So yeah, I'm still a complete noob to be honest in Linux, but still I have managed to configure my current Linux desktop the way I want because of some help from AI. We're going to talk about this later as we go through this video. Now in 2024, it's actually a lot, a lot easier to install and use Linux. Now that you have some info about me and the my Linux experience. Now actually let's get into my actual Linux journey. Actually before we begin there is something I need to tell you. I'm using remote desktop to actually use Linux. The Linux is actually installed on actual hardware. Uh, I can show you guys a hardware info here uh, just by going into the about section i'm not going to go into the terminal because i'm still noob again as i said but i feel like i'm capable of using linux so this is the hardware that i'm using for my linux machine so i don't have capture card or any other equipment to record my uh, laptop's screen so i'm just using the remote desktop and it is also going to be easy for me to use just one mouse and keyboard for both operating systems. So the performance that you're going to see in this video isn't the real performance. The performance is actually 100 times better on actual hardware. Here is the video that I recorded on the actual hardware and uh, it's like 100 times better than what you're about to see in this video. Just to make everything easy, I'm just using RDP. Now, I'm really excited. Let's begin. I chose to use Debian, the mother of most Linux distros out there. Why I chose to use Debian? Because I want to make my own desktop and I want to customize everything by myself. And I want to stay away from distro hopping because I had really bad experiences with other distros that I have tried and it was really difficult to fix the problems. I even did a live stream video about a year ago where I just gave up on Linux because I couldn't fix the problem that I was having with the Linux distro. And another thing, any Linux expert will not use Linux distro. Maybe there are some exceptions. Maybe they really like the Linux distro and they go for it. In my opinion, Linux distros are like pre-configured operating system for different uh, needs. For gaming, there are many Linux distros which comes with almost everything. You don't have to do anything. No wine configuration, no GPU driver configuration, no nothing. They come everything pre-configured so it will be easy for user to just get straight into the gaming or whatever they want to do and it is yes going to save a lot of time and i don't want to do that i actually want to learn linux by myself so that's the reason i am going for the main linux uh, for now i'm on debian the mother of <laughs> most 
distros out there, including Ubuntu and then, you know, the rest. If you're into Linux, you know everything. I, I'm just talking too much here, but this is what I feel, okay? So that's the reason I'm using Debian. And again, as I said, the expert Linux user actually use main Linux distros and they customize it the way they want and they just feel like they own the operating system. So basically, I actually want to learn Linux and I want to configure my Linux by myself. Let's be honest here. Linux isn't a easy to use uh, operating system. If you need to fix something, you need to learn terminal. Even to install graphics drivers, you need to use terminal. No matter which Linux distro you use, at some point you will have to use terminal. Even though we have beautiful GUIs for Linux and they all work, even after that, most of the things are actually still done by terminal. So you have to learn Linux if you actually want to use Linux. Someone actually commented that, you know, uh, just use GUI because I, I don't like terminal. Uh, I'm sorry, but no, there is no way <laughs> to use Linux just with GUI. You have to get into the terminal. Now, it's been actually more than a week. I started my journey. This is my first video after actually using Linux for seven days. So this is going to be the seven days true Linux experience in one video. All right, now let's begin. I think we have begun like multiple times, but I feel like I need to give more info as much as possible. So I'm sorry if this video gets lengthy or anything like that. Now let's begin. First, let's talk about the problems. The first problem when I installed this Linux distro was which desktop environment should I use? There were only two choices for me because I know them very well. One KDE, one GNOME. First, I installed KDE. It felt like home because default KDE actually works just like Windows. But there was one problem with KDE. It doesn't have desktop sharing or RDP, so remote desktop. And I couldn't find anything good that could work with the KDE. Or maybe I'm wrong, please do the comment. Is it true that remote desktop isn't available in KDE? So just to use remote desktop, I had to go with the GNOME. To be honest, I like GNOME because I actually like taskbar and center and also top bar, just like in Mac. I actually like it. I know you can also do this with KDE. You can customize KDE a lot more than GNOME, but GNOME is simple and I like simple stuffs. Okay, it's simple, easy to use, plus you can do some tweaks. You can see I have already tweaked this GNOME using uh, Extension Manager, Shell Extension Manager, and I got some extensions installed actually. Burn my windows just for the animations because I just want to have some fun <laughs> and I like animations. And Dash to Dock animated one. Uh, this one, I made it transparent, plus now it has animations whenever I, you know, uh, go there. <laughs> cool, right? And I'm happy with this much of customization. And I also made everything transparent, the top bar and the dash or dock, whatever you want to call it. In Linux, it is called dash. So for me, it doesn't actually matter which Linux desktop environment I use. I can customize and make the, you know, desktop look the way I want like this one but there are some things that I actually didn't like about the KDE first it is heavy like a lot heavier than the GNOME and it doesn't have some features uh, for now I see that desktop sharing remote desktop isn't available in KDE by default again correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. Now, there is another thing called windowing system. Actually, I prefer Wayland. Okay, I'm not gonna go deep into like what is Wayland and what is X11. I still actually don't know much about them, but I prefer Wayland because first of all, the main reason Wayland is less resource hungry on some apps when you use them. Second, there are some apps which only works with Wayland. It doesn't work with 
X11. So as of me making this video, it looks like it has X11, but actually I was using Wayland, but now Wayland is missing because recently I installed the Nvidia graphics driver and it looks like Nvidia and Wayland doesn't work together. So there is this app called Waydroid that I have installed and also tested when I was using the Wayland. Now it doesn't work because after installing the Nvidia drivers, it has automatically switched to the X11, which I don't like. And I know the GNOME version that I'm using isn't the most recent one, but this is what I can get in Debian by default. This is what they offer. Now let's talk about some issues that I had to go through. So as you know, I make videos and all, and I use OBS Studio. So by default, I can't use hardware acceleration or hardware video encoding, decoding in Linux because we need to install NVIDIA drivers. Without those, it won't work. And installing NVIDIA drivers was a headache. I spent more than five to six hours just trying to install nvidia drivers and i couldn't and i gave up and went to sleep but just this morning it took me like one minute to install nvidia drivers but first let me show you guys this i'm going to show you guys the history of my uh, browser look at this i'm trying my best to find a way to install nvidia and intel graphics drivers and i tried this for again as i said for almost five to six hours and I gave up. For Noob, installing NVIDIA drivers or any drivers is actually really difficult. I even downloaded like the uh, NVIDIA driver from official website too and I got this error and then I actually ran this as a root user using terminal. Then I got another error saying that you're using x server you need to close that i gave up i just like no forget it maybe i'm not for the linux but <laughs> this morning i did something different check this out this morning i straight went to the gemini google gemini the ai oh i think i deleted the actual prompt but i can go into my activity histories uh, today at uh, almost 10 o'clock i gave this prompt to uh, Gemini. The prompt was detailed tutorial on installing in NVIDIA driver on Debian. And guess what? I installed NVIDIA driver on Linux within one minute. First, I installed NVIDIA Detect, okay, and then ran the NVIDIA Detect, and then I simply ran this prompt after that sudo apt install NVIDIA driver no version or nothing like that. When you do that, I think it automatically installs the latest uh, supported driver. So then I reboot it and here I am actually using the hardware acceleration. And after you install the NVIDIA drivers, you also get this uh, NVIDIA settings and, and everything. And it took me just one minute. <laughs> I spent like, full like five to six hours on the internet trying to find a solution or at least trying to find a proper detailed tutorial on installing nvidia drivers i almost gave up but thanks to ai uh, using linux is actually so much easier now and this is actually the first time i actually felt like ai can be useful and they are actually useful with ai anyone can use linux it was so simple. I wasted five to six hours of my time just trying to figure out how to install these uh, graphics drivers. As a new user, this is actually difficult. But thanks to AI, uh, no, no, it's not difficult at all. And I did the same thing with uh, Intel hardware acceleration. And installing this was also really easy. Sudo apt install this thing and a reboot and done yeah this was so easy <laughs> so after successfully installing the nvidia drivers and intel drivers my confidence was like at 100 percent i was feeling exciting thanks to ai i can actually use linux it's easy yeah you know i can't remember every command for everything <laughs> i need to start you know uh, saving some useful commands in the notepad or something. Now let's talk about the system monitor, which I don't like in Linux. 
it only shows the CPU usage and that's all. I actually want to know the GPU usage. So for the NVIDIA, once you install the NVIDIA driver, you can use this NVIDIA SMI command and it pulls out this thing where it gives you the uh, driver info, maybe a little bit of GPU usage, but still I'm not happy with it. So I looked on the internet and uh, found this thing called NVTOP. And using this, I'm not gonna read anything. <laughs> I can actually see both of my GPUs. One is iGPU, integrated GPU, 630. And I can also see the my NVIDIA GTX 1050 Ti. And I can also see the usage here. It's much better and clear. Let's actually do a test. The recording, yeah, it's set to NVIDIA. Cool. Let's go CQP apply okay now i'm gonna start recording now it should start using the gpu memory yeah look at that in windows i always use task manager to see the gpu cpu usage and i love it okay so you can see here it's really useful for me so here you can see the gpu usage in linux when I started recording using NVIDIA GPU. So it's it's at 25%. And I hate X11 because when I use X11, you know, the CPU and GPU usage is always higher compared to Wayland. I need to figure out a way to use Wayland and NVIDIA at the same time. There has to be a way. So yeah, I'll, I'll figure it out, don't worry. Even if I have to switch the Linux or have to switch a uh, desktop environment. I'm actually chilling. I can actually use this Linux without any problem because all of my problems are solved except for one thing. I cannot run a Waydroid, a Android emulator for Linux because Nvidia and Wayland hate each other. They don't work together, but I'm pretty sure there is a way to fix this too. So not gonna do this in this video. You know, one of the biggest problem when using Linux is about the drivers, installing them and making them work. It should have taken me one minute if I had used AI <laughs> to do everything on Linux, but I wasted my time searching on in the internet. AI yeah, is good for Linux users. Now, for this video, let's do one task. Maybe let's install Windows programs. I'm not gonna use Wine, let's, let's use Bottles. And yes, I'm gonna use AI for the help, okay? <laughs> Cause it's 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 actually really good. I'm pretty sure I can get through this. So it looks like it is only available in Flatpak. So I'm gonna add a repo. I'm trying to add the Flatpak repo, but it says command not found. You know, something doesn't work. I can say this, give me a detailed tutorial. Like here, I did this. I'm pretty sure it will work. Yes, look at me, look at me, look at me becoming a professional Linux user. And I, I need to show you guys this, right? Prompt while it's installing the thing. Okay, so here is the thing. So basically I asked it to give me a detailed tutorial installing bottles on Debian. This is what it gave me. And I failed because I don't know the basics of Linux. Okay, I don't know how to add repos. I, I don't know how to install Flatpak. So basically I asked for a detailed tutorial and then it gave me sudo apt update, then install Flatpak. When I installed Flatpak, it, it worked. Then I had to add the repo there. Restarted the system, didn't work. And then what I did was no remote refs found simply i copy and pasted the error and i wrote here error and then it gave me an explanation that the error indicates that flatpak doesn't recognize the flathub repository you're trying to access this can happen if the flathub repository hasn't been added properly so maybe i did something wrong so again so i added the repository and then i did the double check by running uh, what was that? Flatpak remotes. And sometimes you have to add these repositories twice. It doesn't work in first try. And then now I know how to check the 
flat pack repositories whether they are working or not and everything so it's cool yeah that's what i did and I, now i simply have installed bottles actually it's still installing now while it's installing let's have a little bit talk so for now i'm using the mother of linux distros debian but i think arch linux is better it uses the cutting edge technologies or i don't know how to say this but it is the most up-to-date linux it is always running the most up-to-date kernels updates and everything so basically what that means in my opinion is that almost everything works on arch the new things that comes out maybe the latest desktop environment update let's say gnome 46 maybe kde6 those can be easily used in arch linux and i'm in for that actually but also as you know people say arch linux is the hardest linux to get into installing it and configuring it is not easy that's what the people say you know there is a meme about the arch linux i use arch linux by the way you may have seen those memes but i have heard that there is a installer script which makes installing arch linux easy anyone can install it plus i can always use uh, ai's help to install i think arch linux is for me first i need to figure out some basic stuffs about the linux and then i think i can also go and explore the arch linux the father of linux distros <laughs> there is even a grandfather of linux distros can you guess which one is it this is going to be a riddle for you okay guess the grandfather of linux distros <laughs> oh it's taking longer than i expected actually wow i want to see if i can have a download and upload speed monitor in linux let me see wow i'm just loving the linux i can configure it the way i want okay bottles is installed so there are net speed monitors actually available in the uh, extension manager i may need to restart my pc actually okay we can do that okay i love to have a you know internet speed monitor showing all the time in, in windows taskbar so i can do that in linux too now we have the wow we have an error okay i'm gonna go with the classic wine okay not gonna try to fix that for now because uh, the video is getting longer and longer i have something else to uh, talk about so maybe we can install wine there are so many wines i don't know which one oh play on linux lutris is here okay i'm gonna install the lutris let's download the software that i actually want to test momo player you can do key mapping and everything and play games it runs on android 12. Uh, we have waydroid for linux but it doesn't have key mapping support so kind of sucks if you want to do gaming and stuff you know so let's download it let's go to the downloads folder I'm gonna run this with lutris installing graphics drivers okay we need to do that i sure did some big talk about like i want to configure linux myself man you sure need a time and dedication to actually use linux now i need to configure the lutris too so here where the linux distros actually come in handy <laughs> okay if you don't want to go through any configuration for most of the things that you're about to do let's say uh, installing uh, windows games apps on linux uh, if you choose a linux distro focused for gaming yeah it's be easy actually you don't have to do anything yeah they auto do it they come pre-configured so give me a second or maybe minute or two or maybe 10 i'm trying to configure this <laughs> okay this was a dumb idea i don't think i can configure this myself now there is a thing i think we need to end this right here but first uh, we need to talk we need to talk okay so my linux journey and its experience so far has been wonderful because i was actually able to do most of the things pretty well by myself yeah i had to use the ai for most of the things but whatever i did like like i'm really happy that i was able to install the nvidia graphics drivers and intel graphics drivers so i could use the hardware acceleration for video editing plus video recording and everything you know what i'm trying to say here to do this thing for a noob is 
a big accomplishment in my opinion okay and i'm 100 confident that whatever i'm trying to do is actually doable i can do it but it might take some time here and there because i'm new to the linux so from my linux experience what i can tell you is that most people expect linux to work like windows or if not they expect linux to be easy to use without command lines without terminal that is impossible with linux if you really want to use linux for everything you want a game you want to uh, do some creative works video editing you need to give some time to linux and learn how to use command lines and terminals without that linux is not usable at all but there are a few exceptions let's say you just you know surf the internet you spend you know actually most of the people now these days almost everybody is on the internet on the web browser watching youtube or maybe doing some some other things if you're that guy and you don't care about anything else like let's say playing games installing windows uh, stuffs on linux and everything you're good you're good if you don't care about them you're good yeah linux is like really easy to use but if you want to use full potential of linux like you want to do everything what linux can do or what you want to do in linux you need to give some time and dedication so that's what i think and i think most linux users out there will also agree with this okay if you want to use linux give some time some dedication otherwise linux is not for you to make this first linux experience video it took me one week more than one week because i needed that time to actually configure my linux again as i said the biggest issue with the linux when i first installed it about a week ago was installing a graphics drivers for me it is important because you know i make videos and, and i do recordings if i can't use the hardware acceleration for recording and video editing then linux isn't for me but i did it i installed graphics drivers and to be honest i'm in a state where i'm happy with linux okay i don't need anything else if i was not a content creator or anything like that i would just straight start using linux but again as i said there are some problems like i don't like the x11 just my personal preference because there are some apps that i use which doesn't work in x11 even though i'm fully happy with my linux experience just because of the x11 i think i need to do something because i want the wayland and uh, i need to figure out a way to use nvidia and wayland i haven't looked up yet on the internet maybe there is easy way or maybe there is complex way so let's keep that thing for next uh, episode so pretty much everything i did i did it successfully and the linux worked the way i want it everything actually worked out now if you have any suggestions or have something to say in the comments about my linux experience or or maybe i did some mistakes here and there or maybe you want to help me out with my linux journey uh, you can you know always do the comment and we can have some chit chat in the comment section too for the next episode and i don't know when it's gonna uh, come out maybe a few days maybe a few weeks uh, whenever i'm like a little bit more mature <laughs> okay so I'll, I'll keep you guys updated with the community posts so yeah that's it for this one hope you enjoyed it again if you have anything to say or you want to help me just do the comment i try my best to read almost every comment that i get in my videos so that's it for now hope you enjoyed it i'll see you in the next one take care of yourself and have fun bye bye